Oh, it just gave me a notification. I'm like, no. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to Reality Water Cooler. I am Sarah from Texas, and this is our place to chat all the latest reality TV gossip. Jeff Lewis Live in Cabo, Jeff Lewis Extended in LA. How are you? Oh my gosh. I hope everybody, I mean, Y'all know I am a proud, born and raised Texas, South Texas. I have literally never in my life moved more than 35 minutes away from the city I was born at Houston. Um, didn't even, I went, even went to University of Houston. So I love the weather in South Houston. So I hope y'all don't, if y'all have terrible weather, I hope you're not hating me because it is like 82 and pure sun here. So good. It was a little bit chilly this morning. I had like a, almost two and a half hour breakfast with my sister-in-law. I could chat with her all freaking day. Hello, everybody. Um, so good. So good. Um, hope y'all are going to have a great weekend. Let's get 40 degrees in Ohio. Ugh, I mean, that's not terrible, but I would literally be sitting in my house all day if it was 40 degrees right now in April. Thank you for buying a badge, Mr. Emily Post. Gorgeous in Orlando. I'll bet it's always gorgeous in Orlando. <gasps> Vegas is 55 degrees, windy and showers. Oh, that sounds just terrible. If you are going to the May 30th event, let us know. Make sure you get into the Sarah from Texas Facebook group. Under events is where I've already got the information. That's where you can say if you're coming, we can chat hotels, we can chat air flights. Uh, some people, somebody was mentioning uh, driving in from Phoenix or somewhere in the Arizona area. So that is where we can make all the plans to get together and enjoy the show so much. Okay, let's chat Vanderpump Rules, the after show. So I did watch it. Usually I've been bragging about this. I mean, they've had Brittany and Jackson. First of all, I don't want to mix up my shows. What the hell does the, in a way, what does Brittany and Jax have to do with Vanderpump Rules? They're not on it anymore. Like, don't force them on me. But worse than that, towards the end of the Vanderpump after show, they put on the cast of The Valley. Like, what do they have anything to do with them? They weren't even on the show. I don't understand it. I feel like they're just shoving it down our throats. You know what I mean? I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, they don't seem to have much to add. I feel like usually every after show has been really good. They've given us extra information. Now this week, as you know, I chose to watch the Val, uh, the Vanderpump Rules, uh, what they call it, censored and, and extended on Peacock. It's great, but I don't know what was extended. What was censored? I mean, they say the F-bomb, like I guess they normally bleep that out. So as they're, you know, who cares? But the extended part, I kind of want them to put on the, the little screen in the corner, you know, like never seen or special, I don't know, whatever those words are that let us know that, you know, we're getting something better than it. Wait, oh, that's an opinion. The Valley is so much better than Vanderpump Rules this season. I don't know. The Valley just seems a little... I don't know. Yeah, Micah Rowley says the hard pass on the valley. I mean, I will keep watching it. Don't get me wrong. I, FOMO, I don't want to miss something. I don't want to, I don't want, because I never believe, I always believe that everyone should watch, everyone should listen themselves to things, because I always say we come at things with a very different life experience, but also we can hear and see things differently, but I can watch a show and love it, and somebody else could be like, that was so lame, right? Just like Vanderpump Villa, I still haven't, I mean, I was too busy last night, but I was still haven't even touched it. I, 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 I've forgotten. I haven't even gone back to it. You know what I mean? So I haven't even seen the proposal yet. And I'm assuming we can watch the whole season, right? Of Vanderpump Villa. Has anyone finished it? Like, I mean, I watched Buying Beverly Hills immediately. Uh, matter of fact, I was I was about 30 minutes to breakfast. So on my way, I caught um, the Smith sisters this morning on Radio Andy, and they were talking about buying Beverly Hills, which was actually a replay because I'd already heard them talking about it. And I've already watched it all, but 
you know, they're totally into the show for sure. Yeah. Michael watched 20 minutes of Vanderpump Villa and it's a pass. Yeah. Oh, okay. Paige says there's three episodes of Vanderpump Villa were put out and then, then it'll go weekly. Okay. I will try to finish. I guess I'm on episode two if I haven't seen the proposal yet. So I will, I will force myself to do the three episodes and then. So when was April 1st, a Monday. So then on Mondays, Vanderpump Villa will come out again on Hulu. Anyways, um, we are definitely going to talk about the 4.8 earthquake. Y'all are already chatting about it. Comments in New York city, Times Square. I, my first trip to New York City was my college spring break of 1995 with my girlfriend, my, my boyfriend at the time's little sister. She was 18. I had barely turned 22. We went to New York City, Times Square for eight nights. No cell phones back then. We went to every single talk show imaginable. Back in the day, I mean, I've always loved talk shows. Back in the day, you had to write a freaking letter and request dates. So whatever the dates we were there, say March, you know, 19th through 25th, whatever it was, you had to literally be like, Hey, I'm going to be in New York city, all these dates, anytime you're filming, you know, what time we can go. And then they would literally mail you tickets. Yeah. Old school, baby, old school. So we did Phil Donahue. We were in the audience, Geraldo, we were in the audience. Um, oh my God. So many shows. I'm probably forgetting them all. Anyways, and of course, I stood up and asked a question on almost all of them, you know, as much as I could ask a question, if it, whatever the subjects were. Anyways, um, but I've never, ever, the last time, when was I in New York City last? Oh, December of 2023 for the $10,000 dinner. Thank you, Melanie and Scott, invitation. Uh, it's never crossed my mind. Never crossed my mind that an earthquake could even happen, but a 4.0 was pretty big. What's confusing to me now, obviously I live in South Texas. I'm in the land of hurricanes, you know, tornado ish, but mostly hurricane world down here. Uh, tropical storms. How did some people feel it? And some people didn't Andy Cohen post a video. First of all, Bethany Frankel posted a video. I don't even know where she lives anymore. I thought she was like up in Vermont or something. Like, where does her child go to school? You know, I don't, I don't even know what's going on. If she lives in New York City, she, clearly she wouldn't have felt it in Vermont. She was like, was that a was that a earthquake? Was that an earthquake? Was that an earthquake? I don't even know. Oh, Christina says your granddaughter was born this morning. Happy granddaughter grandma day. Oh my God, don't have a name yet. How exciting. Congratulations. Um Anyways, that's always exciting. A, a birth, a birth. Um, okay, Bethany's in Long Island. Is she? I thought her daughter goes to school. I may, do they do a week on week off? I feel like as much as she's even doing a, a remember she's rebranding or whatever her podcast. Yeah, I thought they lived in the Hamptons too. Like lived there, but then I thought they lived in Bur I don't even know. How do we know? everything about Bethany, but we don't know where she lives most of the time or if she still has a New York City apartment. So she li still lives Greenwich, Connecticut. Okay. But that's not the Hamptons. I'm so confused. She's so freaking rich. Did we ever assume she would be so rich when she started off on Roni? Remember, she was like, the little bestie of Jill Zarin and Jill Zarin was definitely made out to be rich, which she is, was, um, but you know, she was like selling like homemade cookies from her apartment in like these grocery stores. And now she's just rich AF. But remember just recently she announced that her and her 14 year old daughter, Bryn are going to start doing a podcast together. I mean, interesting age to do a podcast with your kids a daughter, a 14 year old girl. Like that's a, woo, that's an age. I mean, anyways. Okay. Yeah. But she made this video saying, was that an earthquake? Was that an earthquake? And I'm like, well, do, are you in New York city? Cause you're not feeling it in Vermont, right? You're not feeling it in the Hamptons. So Andy Cohen posts a video with his workout dude, Stan, is that his name? 
and they didn't even feel it. But then P no one in the gym, he said, felt 4.8 magnitude in New York City. And he said they didn't even know that it happened. But people over in the, um, uh, what do you call it? You know, the dressing room. The dressing room felt it. So I'm like, how, how, what? Didn't even make sense to me. Didn't even make sense to me. Oh, Melanie. Uh, are we, are Mel Cousy? Cousy? Are we able to listen to Jeff Lewis Live on the app when he's in vacation? I don't see it listed. Yes. But with the app, if you don't listen and pause it, when it's live, whatever time zone you're in, to listen to it later, you you go a couple of hours and it's not there. And then they put it up later, but I never listen to it later. So um, there will be no video though. So there won't be a video. Yes. So New Jersey, I saw a video inside. So there must be, I guess people have, which makes sense, I guess, especially if you have kids, security cameras inside their house. And they showed it one in New Jersey. So Dory Jr. says it was 4.8 and the epicenter was in New Jersey. And that was like stuff like falling off the walls and stuff. But they're not that common there, right? Like at all. Like I've never thought. But then again, even when I go to, to LA, I'm not like, oh, what if there's an earthquake? And they're way more common there. Do you get a, do, do the news people, do you get a warning? Oh, you felt it? Lily said she they felt it in Connecticut. Wow, interesting. But then I saw a video. I was watching way too many videos this morning, apparently. Uh, in Times Square, like a, a camera up top. And people are just, oh, it's on TMZ, my favorite app. People are just walking around like normal. Like no one even did anything. Like they didn't even know. And you're walking. Crazy, crazy, crazy. No warning. So you don't get any warning. Yeah. Those scare me. I mean, at least with a hurricane, we get a warning. I mean, they can move at the last minute. That's what's the thing with a hurricane. You can literally be told you've got a category five, which is the strongest, the most powerful winds coming straight at your city. You can pack up, get all your stuff, you know, whatever, and, and leave. And by the time you get somewhere four hours later, it's completely moved somewhere else. So, you know, you do, you make the best decisions that you can. You know what I mean? Crazy. Gotta love mother nature, right? Um. Anyways, speaking of mother nature, lightning bolts, who am I going to talk about? Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. What's it make you think of? Tom Sandoval. So last May, so last year before Scandoval blew up on March 1st, about a few weeks before. My friend Sarah sent me a text. She was like, oh my God, Tom Sandoval and his band is coming to Houston to perform. And it's a free concert, like just out of this public area that we have in S not downtown Houston, by, by, the, by, our, by our convention center. Anyways, uh, so we made plans to go, um, probably it's about six or seven of us, maybe eight of us at the time had decided to go. And when Scandaball broke March 1st, um, a few people were like, uh-uh, can't go see Scandaball. Like, I can't even support that dude. So I think in the end, how many people were at dinner? Four of us were at dinner, I feel like. Um, did we meet anyone going over? I think it was four of us ended up going. I'm probably forgetting. Anyways, um, great concert. I posted lots of clips. He puts on a good concert. I mean... It was so easy to be right up front. I'm sort of curious. I, I say this to say I got an email. So I'm on the email for his Tom Sandoval and the most extras. He's coming back to Houston, May 10th, Friday night, May 10th. Again, free at this area. It's called like Avenida of the Americas, uh, like outside. It's kind of a like a sidewalk of sorts, kind of a sidewalk of the area, if you will. But last year, in the midst of Scandoval, I mean, he put down his little Heineken Zero or whatever it's called, his little non-alcoholic beer that he was drinking, like right in front of me. Like literally there was zero security, what have you. Anybody could be right up front. Uh, there was probably a couple of hundred people that I can't really remember. It's kind of hard to guess. There's probably 
300, everyone was so spaced out. It was really hard to figure out how many people were there. Because obviously when my friends and I got up front, we just kind of stayed there. We didn't really look back a lot. So it's kind of hard to say. But it was fun. He definitely, I had my camera out and he was definitely playing into my camera, like looking into it. I said at the time, I almost felt obligated to leave my phone up because it was like rude. He would have definitely noticed if I had put my phone down, like, oh, now this song isn't worthy of recording. Anyways, it was good. I don't know if we'll go again this year. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but it'll be interesting to, interesting to see. You can't have any less security than he had, but I'm curious if they'll have more security. Like if as the tour went on, of course, lots of people were, you know, making fun of him and trying to show different concerts that he was at that had hardly anyone there. It was a hard thing. Like somebody said they would put on a, a, a wig and go, right? It was kind of a hard time for sure to support Tom Sandoval and the most extras. I mean, it was definitely like, don't come to me, you know. Um, he's coming to a town next to me, I think tonight. It's a tiny town. Wow, Dolly girl. We'll scoot on over and see Tom Sandoval. It's a fun time. I mean, he plays like cover songs. I thought it was entertaining. A lot of songs we were able to like sing along. I mean, I mean, did we have more fun at Tom Sandoval and the Most Extras or at Madonna? I mean, that same friend that went to Madonna with me was not one of the ones. She has no clue about Vanderpump Rules. She thinks all this stuff is like no idea what she's talking about. She knows of Jeff Lewis from Flipping Out. And she watched Hollywood House of season one. I don't think she's watched season two yet, but she doesn't listen to the show or whatever, but she doesn't understand, you know, she's not into all these reality shows, but I'm curious because, you know, neither one of us thought Madonna was great because she didn't play all the big songs that we wonder to, you know what I mean? Um, okay. Dolly's girl's going to check out what the prices are. I mean, but the Houston one was for is free and it's free again. It must be something where like the city is, is paying his fee. You know what I mean? Anyways, interesting. Okay. Disappointment again, 90 day freaking fiance. I mean, when am I going to learn? So last night I realized that I hadn't watched, uh, the tell all the latest one. It was part three. They were sort of teasing that Natalie and Josh were going to get engaged. And I'm like, they're not officially even boyfriend and girlfriend. Like she, he has given her no title, no, like, are they dating? Are they a love interest that they put on there before? Like, I don't even know what's going on. I think my friend Sarah at the Sarah Fraser show, I think she told me that in real time, Josh and Natalie are currently dating. But does that mean like, if they're currently dating, then this would be like three years in real time that they've been on again, off again dating. Or she wants a kid really bad. He has, I think, two kids. At that time of the tell-all, Natalie's never even met his kids. I think he has two, right? So now we know in real time, a couple of months ago, an accident happened with Josh's teenage son. I think one of his legs was amputated. So in real time, Josh is dealing with a lot of stuff that's clearly going to take a priority than, um, than Natalie. But Natalie, you know, she just, she just pulls the, um, oh, you're taking advantage of me card. And I'm like, well, uh, uh, you're using him. I don't know. So weird. It gets to the end. There's a freaking tell all part four. Part four. How in the actual hell are they dragging this out? It was a terrible season, like terrible, like Chantel, like fake dating some dude, some soccer player. I don't think he's into her at all. <sighs> so weird. So I cannot believe there's a part four. Louise said they never said Josh and Natalie are getting engaged. It's John and his Texas girlfriend getting engaged. No, they, they did. He got down on one knee. Uh, but Josh had said at one point, what do you want me to do? Propose? They had used, TLC had used that clip as a cliffhanger promoting this tell-all. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my God. Then of course I texted Sarah Fraser and she was like, they're together in real time. And I was like, okay. Anyways, I try not to, I try not to ruin it. Even a couple of y'all sent me uh, 
the next week's Vanderpump rules, like the next seven or eight minutes of it. And I started watching it before I realized what it was. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't watch these previews because I really like to kind of stay in that current time. Like I don't, I don't follow the people much. I don't want to know what's really going on now. I just kind of want to watch the show. You know what I mean? <gasps> but somebody just ruined it. Spoiler alert. Oh my God. I sort of love that though. Mindy, Mindy's vegan life on TikTok says Trey is still dating Shannon. So, oh my God, this is the 38 year old virgin. He had never even had a kiss before. He had been in this catfish relationship, Tyre. Yeah, I know somebody said Trey, Tyre. Um, he had been in this catfish relationship for like five years. The sweetest guy ever. He meets a girl in New Orleans. He doesn't get her name and number. Somehow TLC production does, and she shows up at the tell-all. He gets his first kiss. He walks her, to, and then they had a date, I think, that night. So they're still dating. I mean, are they even the same city, though? Or are they, are they able to travel a lot to see each other? I don't know. I kind of need more. Like, what does it mean that they're still dating? And is he still a virgin or not? <laughs> like, I so want to know. Yes. Natalie. Yeah. Cecily says Natalie is messed up. I mean, Natalie, Natalie, Natalie. And God bless her mom. Her mom is just, you know, her mom just wants to be a grandma. You know what I mean? Uh, anyways, oh, I love that. I said anyways, and somebody's complaining about me saying anyways. Shout out, Rose. I understand. I understand. Well, then that's me. Um, okay. What else? Um, that's it. I've already bitched and moaned about Vanderpump Rules after show. So get get the Valley people off of my like. Just keep me keep me with the the Vanderpump people on there. I don't want to see. Does Brittany and Jax remember last year they did this Brittany and Jax after show or something? Do they still have that for season eleven? I feel like they don't. Are they trying to like still get paid by just tacking them into uh, the, the Vanderpump Rules after show? I don't know. Okay. I, I can go elsewhere. I want to stay here. So I want you to hear. I, I get it, Rose. I can only change myself so much. I'm 51 years old. Like there's not much adjustment I can do. Anyways. I know. Now I'm going to say anyways, <laughs> that's all I'm going to think about is Rose, like dying, like <sighs> anyways, Jules on TikTok. Does Jax have a restaurant? Well, sort of. So I talked about this, I think yesterday. We just found out on this week's episode, episode 10 of Vanderpump Rules, Jax has a restaurant called Jax's Studio City. But he has business partners, but he has put no money into this. So I don't know. He calls it his restaurant. I assume he gets a cut because of his name and he shows up and promotes it and people go because it's Jax Taylor. But why would you not put any? Did, did you not have any money to put? Did he not believe in it? It's basically the reason it opened so quickly it's basically this one area, almost like an apartment, almost like he subleased a, a bedroom out of this restaurant. You know what I mean? So he didn't have to deal with permits or all the issues that something about her is having to deal with. I mean, it opened really fast. So sort of he has a restaurant. I, I, I'm so curious what the financial situation is, like how much money he's getting. You know what I mean? And has he put any money into it? Now, like if anyone lives in the Studio City area, has anyone gone and like blown away? Like I've kind of seen mixed reviews. You know what I mean? Nick, Nicola on Instagram. Do you think the Valley is more interesting because they have actual jobs? I mean, they're not really showing us that version of them in their actual jobs. So at this point, no. Would I want to see that? Yeah, I think I would. Not a ton, but I think I would. But I mostly probably, I mostly probably want to still see them just hanging out. But yeah, I think that's what it was for, you know, my husband dying out of Vanderpump Rules is eventually 
okay, a friend went to Vanderbilt, to Sir and when Villa Blanca was open years ago, and she was like, none of those people were there. Like, they don't really work there. And I was so jaded. I was so disappointed. I was like, what? And then I realized, yeah, those people, even years ago, it stopped really being, like, Lala wasn't hosting at Sir. You know, Katie isn't waiting tables there anymore. Like, if anything, you know, uh, uh, James is hosting, like, see you next Tuesday. And then the cast is showing up so they can film it. But how many see you next Tuesdays can you go to? At, at, at one point, it's just a, a meet and greet, right? It's just the fans going. I mean, isn't that how Allie? I mean, didn't Allie show up? at James's DJing at C maybe at see you next Tuesday. And she was like a fan and they started dating like weeks, literally after him and Raquel broke off their engagement. I don't know. Mindy's vegan life says, how far is the Valley from where they used to live when they worked at sir? I remember like them putting the little thing down there, their apartment, they would put like, you know, Stassi's, WeHo or West Hollywood apartment or so I don't know I have a it, I guess it depends on where they live in this valley valley village is that what it's called uh I would say 30 to 40 minutes but I don't know I guess I guess it really depends on how big okay Nicholas says 20 minutes north because a lot of them had moved and yet still were on Vanderpump rules so they were really traveling far Guess it all depends on traffic, right? Also, for sure. Um, <laughs> oh, Rose, throw me a bone. It's Friday. Because now, because you brought it up of me saying anyways, I feel like I'm going to say it more subliminally on accident. Yes. Thank you. I thought I could help increase the numbers viewership your peeps won't allow it oh look rose rose was just trying to be sweet i mean anywho people either watch or they don't okay shay blanc oh four i love that name valley village to weho is about 20 to 25 minutes depending on traffic hail to the no stared 49 how are you eating healthy now not at all. Did you see my Instagram story with the food that my sister-in-law shared this morning? I'm not eating healthy at all. And then my 18-year-old last night, you know, I'm already feeling anxiety and extra stress, just excitement, slash stress, slash all the emotions of her graduating, going away to college in August. And she comes in and she's like, do you want to go to Marble Slab? I hadn't even had dinner yet. My husband and son had gotten a uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. We had Bowen get one free on some Thursdays. They get wings. And um, I didn't want that. And I wasn't hungry for dinner. And so I, I guess I had, I guess I had marble slab for dinner. $7.99 for the two cups of ice cream. I got mini marshmallows and Oreos mixed into this blue something, blue Oreo, some kind of ice cream. And then I paid $2.39 for the Heath basket, like this bowl. It's the best $2.39. So then my daughter gets similar, but she got two different ice creams. And her lady didn't even ask her if she wanted mix-ins. I mean, isn't that why we're paying a fortune at Marble Slab is because of the mix-ins option? Like I can go anywhere and just get two scoops of ice cream. So then she hands it to her. She had it in a cup, but not a waffle bowl. I assume she got a waffle bowl and I go to ring it up and it was $7.99, $7.99 and then $2.39 or $2.89 and $2.89. And she didn't even get a cone. Uh, she didn't even get a special uh, bowl with all the deliciousness and she got nothing mixed in. So she would never say anything and they hand it to her and she was like, oh, because she was going to get two mix-ins. I got two. You can get up to three for free, they claim. And, uh, the lady just looked at her like, oh, well, I didn't do it. it. So she like put some marshmallows on top, like squished them into the whatever. Anyways, $20 for two things of ice cream. Literally, literally, literally. Okay, let's get into Jeff Lewis Live in Cabo. Krista's voice. 
Wow. I'm sort of surprised. Like it got better at the end after she got her Cabo La Farmacia amoxicillin. Uh, it did get better, but dang, her voice was really cracking. I was almost, I was driving at this point. Uh, I was driving about 25 minutes to go back home. So I was in the car and listening and I was like, I don't know how, I, I don't know if I can listen to this. It was really bad, like really broken. Like, like it was about to, like she had no voice. You know what I mean? Um, but then it did get better. But somebody, who was it that said that they tested some pharmacy items and it came back with uh, uh, fentanyl? And so Jeff was like, yeah, we are not buying anything from La Pharmacia. So then Krista, so it's Krista Liot. So I kind of would get their voices mixed up a little bit, although you could really tell Krista's with the, the, the going in and out. Uh, Shane, Joey Zalzig, and Jeff Lewis in, uh, in Cabo. So Jeff says that, and then Krista lets us know that her butler is on his way now to get her her medicine, it comes back. So amoxicillin is pretty much the everything you get for a, for an infection or whatever you call it, like strep throat. What else do you use amoxicillin for? Everything. But we don't actually mix it. Like when I get it for my, isn't that the bubblegum stuff that the like the the pharmacy adds the bubblegum flavor or whatever your flavor your kid wants, and they mix it up and it's the pink stuff. So she, so they just gave her the powder, like the uncompounded, if you will, version of amoxicillin. Isn't that bizarre? No, I think a lot of people love her. Michelle says, maybe unpopular opinion, but I love Krista so much. She has always cracked me up. I love her. She's very sweet in person too. She really is. She's very fun um, and beautiful. She's freaking beautiful. I think she understands her role. I think she knows she's the one that um, I think she knows that she is the one that uh, that Jeff makes fun of and kind of ridicules about her parenting and being single and all the things. It's cough medicine. Yes. Robin says amoxicillin is antibiotics and in pill form. Wait, I know my kids have had it in the pink bubblegum stuff liquid, but that's because kids can't take a pill. She must have taken something different. She was saying amoxicillin, wasn't she? For kids, it's the pink stuff. Adults, it's in capsules. I trust my mama Judy. Shout out mama Judy. Um, yeah, I, I feel like she needed like warm salt water or something. So what do you think she did? She just mixed it up with water. Like how would she know how much to take? Like it was kind of freaking me out because they had just said, I think I just got in trouble on TikTok. So I better be careful about what I say. I swear it gave me a restriction. They probably heard that word I used anyways. Um, the, the, the thing that came in the, 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 the thing that they tested for at the pharmacy anyways. Um, what else? What did they call Jeff? Did someone say stop being an asshole? So they're at this, um, they're at this uh, fancy, expensive resort in Cabo, mostly adults, mostly gay men is what Krista said, probably because she's, you know, looking for a dude and she's noticing, hey, there's no one here. Um, but they have spray water guns, which Jeff loves. And they noticed this guy by himself, like with this, a lot of food, like kind of in this weird spot, maybe coming out of the, um, the, uh, oh, what do you call it? The water thing, the river, the river raft, the river water. <laughs> what is it called? I know in two seconds, y'all are going to put it up. Oh, called him a jackass. Yes. Stop being a jackass. Oh my God. But I hate to be sprayed. But if I were a single person, lazy river, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Rose. Rose is still here. Wait. Yay. Shout out, Rose. We kept you. Yay. 
Um, Robin says, Je uh, Jeff is cracking me up with the water guns, the lazy river, but I can't stand. So there's lazy rivers that I just want to relax and lay on. My kids are older now. So, you know, we don't have to necessarily be in the kiddie pool. I don't see the lazy river as just for kids. Like I love a lazy river, love them, love them, love them. But we've been to ones where there's this mandatory thing of water that you have to go under. So your face is always going to get what these public places, the amount of freaking chlorine and chemicals that are in these lazy rivers is disgusting. It burns my eyes. If I have sunscreen on, which I usually do or a hat, then the water, I mean, it does I sound like a pissed off 75 year old, but they really, I don't want water sprayed in my face. I don't know that I would call someone a jackass, but I think if they did it more than once, the look on my face would give it away and I would be like, but they're saying this guy's like by himself without kids and he should have just went to the adult pool. And I kind of think so too. If I'm at such an expensive ass resort and they've got an adult, seven pools and one's an adult pool overlooking the freaking ocean. And they said, it's gorgeous. I'm there. Like, why are you hanging out by the lazy river by yourself? And I don't think, it sounds like there's not that many kids at this resort. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mama Judy says, if I paid a lot of money, I don't want to be sprayed. I agree. Even at the lazy river. So does an adult being at a lazy river imply you're okay with being splashed or whatever by kids. I have been at lazy rivers that have just as many teens and adults as they do little kids. Often the little kids aren't on a floaty relaxing. They're the ones like walking because the, you know, the lazy rivers are only about four feet tall. So they're the ones like walking around each other and kind of like swimming. So if I'm on a lazy river, I don't want to be sprayed in the face with a water gun. I would, I would definitely not be okay that. Um, <laughs> Rebecca says, I love Jeff's sense of humor, but I could see him being incredibly annoying. Also, I don't really know how much he plays this stuff up for the radio. Like, you know, we heard him say yesterday, something happened at the resort, like, something and they would not tell them at all. And he was like, come on, we want the story for radio. So, you know, I, I do think there's a part where they go to dinners, they go on these vacations. I think that's probably why Jeff is okay paying for a lot of this. I mean, even like Shane is still working, you know, Liot is on the radio. Uh, Joey Zalzig is on the radio. Shane's on the radio. Krista is, I mean, they're still working. It's kind of a working vacation, if you will. Um, that's true. Nick James says, you're at a pool. You're going to get wet. Go to the adult pool if you don't want the playfulness. I love a lazy river, though. It makes me want to go to one now. I can't tag you. Oh, somebody. Oh, y'all. Yes. Okay. I haven't listened to it yet, but I did. I've been hearing about it for days. Um, Mari on TikTok is talking about uh, Annie sharp and her boyfriend's podcast called age gap y to z podcast um and what happened at heather mcdonald or after heather McDonald, not at heather mcdonald at uh, countess Louisiana last last friday night um like grabbing her wrist and stuff and somebody said or she said jeff lewis's uh Attorney was there, Marlo, and she said it was assault. Is there a lawsuit coming at Heather McDonald? I do not know. Do not know. Heather McDonald didn't physically touch me at BravoCon, but she was definitely aggressive. So it, it sort of tracks, sort of tracks. And, uh, you know, the same thing, y'all know, when she tells, uh, you know, Heather apparently tells Annie, Oh, now you're going to work for Jeff Lewis. Great. You know what I mean? She said the same thing to me about Annie. Oh, and I know you've got Annie working to you for you. Great. And I'm like, oh my God, like anybody can work for anyone. You know what I mean? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, thank you, AC. 
hit the like button and show Sarah the love. You're sweetie. Um, Michael Riley says, handsy Heather. Someone said that, um, someone said that Brandy and Julie put out a free version of their podcast to give their take on the Countess Luann night. And that part of it was them admitting that Heather McDonald was very drunk before they even got to the event. So I have no idea. No idea. I haven't listened to it. I, I don't, I tried to look up Brandy and Julie's podcast is called um, Dumb Gay Podcast. Now that's what it's called. The latest episode doesn't say anything about Jeff Lewis in particular. So if they were marketing things right, they would advertise or put in the title, you know, what happened with, Jeff, you know, the real story or whatever. So who knows? Interesting. Um, no, it's her own podcast. That's her and her boyfriend's podcast. Bryson Patriot says Annie went on some podcast. It was epic. Unless she did another podcast that I don't know about, but this one was on hers that she did. Well, I am um, Melissa Bloom. I think it was on their Patreon, wasn't it? That's what someone told me, I think, during our live. Okay, Katie Doug says the real story is on Patreon, not the free one. Someone told me they made it free. Okay, Robin says they did a free podcast on Patreon. Okay, so maybe you have to go to Patreon. I have no idea. Um, the whole story was on the latest podcast regarding Jeff. But where do they go to get that? Where do people go to, to listen to that? Yes, that's her boyfriend. He's a comedian. They've been together like two, two and a half years. Yeah, very cute. Anyways, what else? Um, Jeff is so freaked out. Like, okay, apparently you go to Patreon. Is it called Dumb Gay Podcast there? No, I assume it's called Brandy and Julie. I don't even know. Don't even know. Okay, back to Jeff. Jeff is super freaked out about um, this yacht that they're going on today. Woke up at four in the morning. He's freaked out about sharks. He's freaked out about Monroe. If there's enough lifeboats, if there's enough life jackets, uh, will he get bored? Is four hours too much? He can't take a nap. Will he get seasick? I mean, all the things. He's really, he's more of a worry wart and a helicopter dad as she gets older, which makes sense. But he's very, um, which may, I mean, Water in a seven-year-old, there is nothing to play around with that. I almost assume she's legally required to wear a life jacket at all times, right? I think in Texas, it's a, under age 14 on a boat you have to wear, but I don't know anything about yachts. Don't go on yachts. Uh, Nick James says, Joey's story, Joey Zalzig's story has video of the lot. It's gorgeous. Okay, it's called, Mama Judy says, it's called Julie and Brandy on Patreon. Oh, it's very below deck. Well, so, y'all remember Trevor and Liat from Flipping Out? I mean, we know they had money back then. Now they probably have 15 times. They're definitely rich. I have a feeling going on vacation with Jeff Lewis and being the ones to get the yacht. You know, we got the yacht, yacht. Uh, they step things up even more a notch. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they're not going to like not get the best yacht available. So that kind of makes sense. Um, okay. Monday, somebody needs to call in Monday on Jeff Lewis live. The main guest co-hosts are going to be Mercedes Javid and Jamie. Somebody asked her about buying Beverly Hills. Like she's a realtor at the agency. I don't know what team she's on. I don't know why she wasn't recording with Buying Beverly Hills. Did they offer her? Did they not? Does she not want to? Uh, but I'm curious of that. And I'm curious what she was going to say. It almost sounded like yesterday's, remember on Jeff Lewis Extended, she teased before the last commercial break that she, it almost sounded like she was going to talk about Something about Chef Stu and like the friends, the mutual friends that he and Jeff Lewis uh, have in like since the breakup. And then she didn't say anything about it. So nobody knows. 
Um, Paul and Patrick are on today's Jeff Lewis Extended. I don't know what city it is, but he sent me the information last week, April 21st and 22nd. They're going to be live in Hawaii and doing coffee readings, but Hawaii doesn't narrow it down. So I don't really know. Has anyone seen what city it's in? Anyways, go to polatu.com. A lot of people called in today uh, about their coffee readings that had really good. Y'all know I've talked about mine over and over again. He did mine when I was in at BravoCon and the crazy stuff about me traveling came true. It was crazy. Um, Adika, Edika says, I used to love Heather McDonald and listening to her podcast, but since the Jeff drama, it has changed. I think a lot of people think that. Not even since the Jeff drama. A lot of people say Kalua. Oh, in Kalua, they said. Okay, how did I miss that? I literally asked him what city it was in before I went live because I, I missed it. I didn't even hear it. Okay. They do this big, long fashion review um, about the co-hosts and how they dressed and all the things. Uh, basically, they decide, like they've said before, that Jeff dresses the best on Tuesdays. I have no idea why. Like why he would dress the Tuesdays, best dress the best on Tuesdays. Um, he did say they have a party. Tiffany Chump says, hopefully they have a party when we go to the spring fling. They did say that you can book your coffee reading, but you know, that's in Hollywood. That's in Beverly Hills. So then you'd have to go south down to Irvine for the show. But yeah, anyways, um, they talked a lot about Todrick's birthday party last night. It was a hoedown theme, H-E-A-U-X, which is like a slang for your, like, your close friends. I thought that was super cute. Very extravagant like uh, riding a cowboy type stuff. His cake was beautiful, all the decor, uh, apparently lots of famous people, lots of hot people, very cool. Um, a lot of famous people were there, a lot of their friends. Paul and Patrick, I feel like know everybody in LA. Like I feel like they are invited to every single party and they're always up for it. They do talk lately about um, or uh, about that, about so many hot people. And they saw so many guys. I think Paul was saying he saw so many guys that he could have hooked Jeff Lewis up with. So I don't know. No idea if Jeff Lewis is looking. Um, he's not really talking. I mean, I think I think, you know, he's got Monroe, but I think people that go to this resort are probably coupled up. Don't you feel like like it sounds like it's all couples? I don't know. Couples or friends. Who knows? Oh, good information, Cecily. I missed, okay, on Watch What Happens Live. Thank you. Haven't watched it yet. On Watch What Happens Live last night, a video caller told Andy that she couldn't wait for BravoCon this year, and Andy said him too. So that means it's on for sure. Did she say Las Vegas or did she say New York? I don't even know. Oh, <laughs> Tiffany Chump says, I got the selfie light because of Paul and Patrick. So did I. It's a great selfie light. It's insane. It's so good. So good. Um, we are going to wrap things up, but Paul and Patrick also talk at the end of today's extended about raising Patrick's daughter. So don't forget, Patrick has a grown ass adult daughter and Paul and Patrick have been together so long. Paul was actually very hands on. He has told stories when I've been at the, um, his boutique about how he was always the strict like disciplinarian. And so today we heard a little more. Patrick was like, Oh, I was always fun. Dad, Disney dad, just let them do what they want. I mean, clearly it worked out. Okay. She's like a doctor now. I don't know if they've said what kind of a doctor, but she's a doctor. So very good. Very good. Oh, Evie, are he and are Jeff and Gage done with their custody issues? I mean, don't know if it's ever going to be done. I, I I feel like what month is this? Are they going back to court soon? Has he really said? I don't know that he's really said. Anyways, shout out everybody. Have an amazing weekend. Hope you do all the things you want, all the things you don't want. Relax. All the fun stuff. And I will see you Monday, same place, same time, 12 Pacific, 3 Eastern. Bye, y'all.